And now, it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hookup. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. By Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup, and Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray and rock cod Rick Maxa. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. I'm Pete Gray with rock cod Rick Maxa. We're live at the Hyatt Regency Hotel in the lobby bar, one of our favorite places to hang out here at the Hyatt for the Fred Hall Ultimate Outdoor Experience, the final day, Sunday today, day five here at the Long Beach Convention Center. We have a great show lined up for you today. It's our Eastern Sierra Classic. And we have Whitney Lemon from Mammoth Lakes, Ryan Dorr from Adventures in Camping, Whitney Coral Stores, one and only Doug Thompson, and from Mono County, Jeff Simpson. And, of course, we have Bart Hall to talk about the show and all the fun things going on here. Come on down. We've got a ton of great prizes to give away and plenty of seats this morning. Stay tuned. This is Let's Talk Hook Up Southern California Sports Fishing Boys on the Mighty 1090. The new Shimano Torium HG is here, and you'll be able to experience this fantastic reel at the Fred Hall Shows. The new Torium is up to 30% smaller than the previous generation, but still has the same line capacity. The smaller S-compact body design and one-piece die-cast aluminum frame provides more rigidity and lighter weight. Torium now has EI surface treatment and has tested up to 700 times the corrosion resistance of past models. The new Shimano Torium HG is not only better on the outside, The inside is amazing with a cross-carbon drag, providing up to 24 pounds of drag pressure from a star drag reel. It has a sealed roller clutch and 6.2 to 1 brass gears. The machined aluminum handle has a larger knob to make it easier to crank in the big fish. The new lightweight aluminum spool gives you better casting and control. Available in three sizes, the Torium HG is the next evolution in a compact, rigid, and powerful saltwater star drag reel. Get it at the Fred Hall Show and your local Shimano dealers. For Rancho Leonero, here's John Ireland. We're kind of unique for the fact that I think we're really the last of the uh, old Baja fishing style hotels. It's uh, a thousand acres altogether, and the hotel's small. It's only a 34 room hotel. We don't aspire to be bigger, we just aspire to be better. We've been working on the ranch continually. You know, I did a half a million dollar renovation, upgrading the hotel, the bar. We put in new split air conditioning in rooms one through five. They're like an ice box inside. We did a complete new gymnasium. We've been adding boats and upgrading our boat fleet. We're constantly working on the grounds. I'm having my daughter down there. She's a gardener, so the grounds and everything is much better. From maintaining the rooms, putting in mirrors, putting in beds. I replaced every bed in the hotel. They're awesome beds. We have the best beds in all of Baja, not just the East Cape. People love the beds. You know, the bedding and the higher quality towels. He's trying to do it a little bit better. It's a special place. Come down and relax. RanchoLanero.com. The offshore fishing last year was some of the best we've seen in years. Let's hope our luck keeps up in 2015. It's a brand new year, and what better way to kick off a new year than with a new Ford? Once again, Ford is America's favorite brand. Just take a look at last year's sales figures. It's right there in black and white. It's easy to see why Ford is so popular. Styling is contemporary, the technology is state-of-the-art, and the fuel economy is more impressive than ever. Fusion, Focus, and Escape continue to be San Diego favorites, and the new Mustang has the entire city buzzing. You've got to check it out. Right now, you'll find the biggest savings on F-150 pickups. The last of the 2014 models are going fast. And talk about popular, Ford F-Series has been America's best-selling truck and a favorite among fishermen for almost four decades. In fact, a new F-Series truck is sold every 43 seconds. Imagine catching a fish every 43 seconds. You'd be popular, too. Start the new year in style. Stop by your San Diego County Ford dealer They'll be glad to hook you up. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090 live here at the Hyatt Regency in Long Beach. It is the Fred Hall Show, the wrap-up, the final day of what has got to be the biggest show we've ever been a part of. Is that true, Bart? The biggest show ever? Has to be. Got to be. Uh, No, actually, it isn't true. Uh, (laughs) Not yet, anyway. It certainly seems like it. Yeah. Yeah. 
We did have one record day in the four. But you've got to remember, back in before the recession happened, we had um, enormous crowds. We've, we've forgotten that over the last right. seven years, okay? And we're, we're approaching it again. But I tell, what I have noticed is um, Saturdays have always been the same for a long time because we use all the available parking. So numbers aren't going to change ever on Saturday. I mean, <laughs> unless, as many as you can fit. unless we can start putting them in, you know, in container ships out on the water or something. Yeah. There's uh, plenty of those out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, the people here are very excited this year. And so uh, the, the, we've had increases every day from, from last year, and last year was an increase over the year before, and the year before we've been building back from the, from the depth of the recession. But um, I just think it's been fantastic. And I think this is, for me, of course I say this a lot, but th I think this is the best-looking show we've ever put together. If, if you haven't gone into the sports ring and looked at the boats, you're doing yourself a real disservice. Just it's amazing. Just look it at looks it. I amazing. mean, it looks like a showroom in some fancy, you know, I don't yeah. know. It's, it's unbelievable. There's so much stuff around to see and do and have fun. And one of the things that we were talking about yesterday was the, uh, the, the aqua petting zoo. <laughs> Which was just is just an amazing feature here, right? <laughs> I'm glad you remembered that. Yeah, you, you hadn't had as much to drink as me. <laughs> Maybe. Um, yeah, the, the, that's great. You know, we we have this touch tank, which is now called the Aqua Petting Zoo, and it's a huge hit. It's over by the salt, by the Accurate and the Hobie saltwater tank. And if, if you're getting depressed or you feel you're too stressed, just go watch those little kids touching those sea snails and those slugs. And I'm telling you, it's it's really liberating. Yeah, here. it's really. And that's the one thing about this show that I see is so many things for kids to do for the families, right? Yes, that's the idea. You know, the business model we started 69 years ago was we will provide a full day of family fun once you get inside the doors. And we've we've tried to keep true to that, and I think everybody's having a pretty good time. Yeah, everywhere you turn, there's something for kids to do. Well, they, do. Can, they can ride the, the kayaks on the lagoons with, with, you know, their parents. They can cast. They can cast with the, with the ca casting in the city. They have a rock climbing wall. There's a There's a simulator for flight. There's... The duck races. There's archery. Two, ar two archeries. Two archeries. One, one of them is, you know, uh, you have to hit the moving target. And, and then they have air gun ranges and soft air gun ranges and laser shot games, several laser shot games. Yeah, it's just, it's unbelievable. Trout fishing, the Mammoth Lakes Kids Fish Free Trout Pond. Wow. And where they have been snapping all week long. Are they biting, huh? We said that yesterday, now there's a record, we think yesterday was the best Saturday bite we've ever had. Because <laughs> by Saturday, you know, it's starting to, those fish are getting beat up a little bit. But they were snapping all day yesterday. It was oh, great. Cool. And wow. some big ones, too. Yeah. And Fishing Games, Fish and Wildlife has done a wonderful job uh, out there and with all of the stuff they, they have. They're showing you the trout and their evolution and the, and the antique trucks and um, they've done a real nice job. We had a brother and sister, uh, probably five-year-old brother and sister, come through the sh shop yesterday, and they showed every one of us in, in behind the counter their trout. The brother showed his first. Look at my trout that I just caught. And then the sister, look at that. They showed every single employee in our booth, which five or six guys. I guarantee you they did that to every single booth. They showed, like, <laughs> you've never seen two kids so stoked to show off their fish in your life. You know, I used to go out there when things got tough. I would just take off my vest and go out and work the trout pond. Get out of here. I'm working now. Go away. Because I used to work the trout pond. That was my job when I was a kid. And uh, it's really great to see those kids. And you don't think you created a fisherman when you do that? Uh, no doubt. They kiss them. They yeah. take them out and kiss these dead trout. Yeah. <laughs> cool. now, now, Tim, are those Alpers trout? Uh, no, they're not. <laughs> Stop. Bart and I seem to be on the same page. No, they're not. No, they're not. I, I, Great I failed question, to, though. I, I yeah. failed to mention uh, supervisor Tim Alper, who is no longer in the fish making business, but he's in the uh, supervising business, right? Good morning, Tim. Good morning, and thank you for the introduction. Yes, I'm on the board of supervisors, and my constituents pushed me in to do what I could to uh, cement the fishing industry and help. Uh, uh, move the fishing industry along onto uh, great heights in our county. So that's kind of my mandate as an elected official this go round. Are you still involved in aqu would it be aquaculture? Or? Actually, no. I'm retired. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Retired to your supervisor. <laughs> well, right? I'm retired from aquaculture. <laughs> yeah, right. it, you know, I had a fantastic 35-year run. I'm a little bit beat up. I've had 11 orthopedic procedures from the waist down. I'm, oh. I'm like a worn-out backhoe, you know, doing that fish business. But uh, I, you know, I haven't left the uh, closet empty. Uh, I've helped recruit in uh, a, uh, a new grower for this, uh, for the future, hopefully, uh, an outfit out of Southern Oregon, uh, Desert Springs, uh, uh, trout farm. They put out a very high quality trout. We've worked together on various projects, uh, over the years when I was in the industry on making, uh, what I always thought the angler wanted was the closest thing to a wild trout as can be produced, uh, on a trout farm. That was always my goal. And we, Developed quite a following here in Southern California and really around the world with those fish coming to the uh, Eastern Sierra, both Inyo and Mono County. So I was very proud of that. We got a great grower coming online, and we've got some of the things we're uh, uh, working on for the future of homegrown trout uh, in the Eastern Sierra on uh, the Conway Ranch and possibly some other uh, 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 other sites. Yeah. So, and and Whitney Lennon from Mammoth Lakes. That is. A lot of the extra trout that you're planting in Mammoth Lakes, right? Yeah, that's right. We increased trout stocking last year, uh, $20,000. So we're now stocking almost 14,000 pounds just in our Mammoth Lakes basin, wow. half of which are trophy. That means five plus. Yeah. The boss said, we need more trout. So you're getting more trout, right? The people said. The people said. Yeah. We listened. Now okay. we're responding. Yeah. No, that's great. So that's in addition to the, uh, the trout that... Uh, Department of Fish and Wildlife plants, right? Yeah, That's absolutely. And Mono about. County. Yeah. And Mono County plants trout too, right, Jeff? Yeah, that's right. Um, we've, we've also recognized that there's a higher demand here, so we, we stepped up to the plate. Traditionally, we stock about $100,000 worth of fish every year. Um, we plant those through 21 different bodies of water, and those are all three to five pound trophy trout. This year, we've actually increased our stocking numbers to 130,000. So this whole summer, we'll have increased stocking up there in the High Sierra. Wow! And I know, uh, I, I know Doug Thompson uh, from Whitney Portal Store down in your zone down there. Uh, you, there's plenty of trout around too, right? Well, uh, yeah. Yesterday was what we call the early opener, so everything south of Independence opened. Yes, well, actually, yeah, Saturday, and uh, you know, the Derby down at Diaz Lake. Uh, what we're really getting now, we're getting the year-round fishing with the uh, lower olds being active with uh, the rewatering a few years ago. So, and then fishing wildlife uh, put some trout in the Tenement Hall uh, last year, so they're catching large trout. You know, Brown's right out of Tinnabong Reservoir, but on the Lower Oz, and then the Five Bridges area is really active all the time. So, yeah, so the Lower Oz is really picking up. I talked to a lot of people at the show now. I've been going up there catching, uh, uh, you know, bass in, uh, in, in trout, and believe it or not, catfish and carp. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, Whitney, uh, 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 Lone Pine, that area is kind of one of those places a lot of us on the way to Mammoth Lake stop and... Uh, fuel up and get a cup of coffee and on the way, but a lot of people stop and, and fish there, and there's pretty good fish in there. Right, right. Yeah, it's, it's one of the kind of the uh, secret spots. Uh, uh, people will drive up, and, and a lot of people come from Lancaster, Palmdale area, just to drive up and fish. Uh, and this started four or five years ago when, when the Lower Owens was rewatered, the 62 miles uh, by mandate, and then... You know, they didn't stock any fish. They wanted to see what was going to happen and by, by some natural events. You know, the, the, the bass caught there. And then we have carp. We have the, uh, uh, the catfish. And uh, like I say, the trout. Uh, the trout's probably better until, uh, you know, July gets a little warm. And then after September, the trout's picking up again. But, what, yeah. what if you don't know where to go in that area? Uh, uh, fishing wildlife just put in, out a new uh, uh, map. And you can pick it up at the Bishop Chamber, you know, booth at the show. And then they'll just go online. Uh, and then w there's an article written, uh, in, I think it's in the uh, Western Outdoor News, but the local fishing guide, a guy named Charles James, went around and interviewed a lot of people, the local people that fish there and fish there. You know, you know one of the guys, he averages about 900 to 1,000 uh, bass a year he catches and releases. Uh, so, so he's an asset. But then the Fish and Wildlife uh, uh, biologist for Bishop, had a lot of input in the article, but in the article it shows you or tells you how to get to these little ponds. And it, there's a lot of access roads uh, off of 395. It's about a probably a half a mile, mile drive into some of these areas. But uh, once you're in, you could go north or south and fish a lot of the little ponds and areas that are open and cleared. Wow. Now, Ryan Dorr sitting next hey, to you there. Hey, Pete. Go ahead. I got to tell you something, though. You, you know, 
Uh, I was just up there at the Lone Pine Pheasant Club shooting pheasant, and <clears throat> I'm sitting on that patio, and I started to realize that this is where Hollywood decided to make Western movies. So our whole vision of the West comes from that there area. And it is, once you get off the highway, and actually after you've had dinner at Seasons, of course, it is the most spectacular place you can imagine. It's a wonderful place to fish. So yeah. beautiful. Yeah. It's so beautiful there. And, and, and it has quite a history of in Hollywood, right? You just watch some of the old movies and, hey, I know that place. Well, well, John Wayne and his crew used to hunt pheasant down there on that pheasant club back when they were shooting those movies. Yeah. And all of that stuff that we see, it was wrapped in our memory, comes from that beautiful geographic area. Did you get any pheasant? Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> anyway. Now, Ryan, uh, Ventures in Camping, uh, you, you, what do you do? You place campers in places that people want to go and enjoy the outdoors. Yeah, Pete, that's right. Uh, we uh, set up travel trailers in the uh, Sierras from Bishop to Bridgeport. Uh, we're based out of Mammoth Lakes, and we have about 12 different uh, floor plans that we can take out for you. Set everything up so you don't have to worry about it and haul your boat up or drive your car and come camp, stay for the weekend, stay for the week, stay for the summer. I think, I think that's so cool. That's really cool. And, and, and there's many, many favorite spots that people like to place campers. Can you name a couple of them? You know, uh, a few of the favorites, uh, Twin Lakes and Mammoth. Uh, they've got a great uh, bike path there that wraps around all the campgrounds and takes you down into the town, and you can uh, take a bus back up into the lakes uh, basin. Uh, it's close to town, but still feel like you're up in the wilderness, have a campfire, and fish right out from your uh, from your RV door. And these uh, aren't like tents. These are these are deluxe, like full-featured campers, right? Yeah, these are uh, fully self-contained trailers. Uh, in fact, uh, most of them have uh, TV, DVDs. Uh, all of them are equipped with heaters and refrigerators, stove and ovens. And yeah, so they're all the comforts home. Wow. How much a night? Uh, right now, uh, you can get up there for about $100 a night. Uh, in the peak time, July and August, about 175 a night is average. We have some for less, some for more. Yeah, but uh, I have never heard anyone undersell it so much in my life. Yeah, I, I think the same thing. My, I mean, my family does a... this every year, and let me tell you, you show up to a campsite, <clears throat> and here it is, three trailers and rings in a circle. There's stuff on the ground so that you don't get dusty. There's chairs everywhere. There's barbecues. There's tables. There's a satellite. And you didn't have to drive that damn thing yeah. up. You just got out of your car. And, oh, look. And then when you're done, you put the keys back and go away. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's a week's worth of preparation that you don't have to do. You just get to spend that time enjoying it, and, and there's nothing. There's nothing to it afterwards. You know, I think we take it for granted because we haul them all over the time, all, you know, all the time, all summer. And uh, we take the work out of it. So you don't have to worry about hauling it up there yourself. You don't, have, you know, you even have folks that own their own RV that don't want to haul it up, don't want to drive it up. So yeah, come try us. Come give us a. Come give us a call. Come on, you save your figure too. I was, <laughs> I was putting up a trailer, hooking up the safety hitch. It took my finger off about oh, five years ago. Oh man, that hurts. Well, as you can hear, we have a great show lined up for you today. What an amazing panel of guests here, uh, talking Eastern Sierra fishing, and it's. Uh, it's time. You're not kidding. What a great, uh, what a great opportunity to get to talk to all these guys in one spot. And how rare of an opportunity is that for us? It's going to be a great show. Any question that you had about everything having to do with the Eastern Sierra, this is the spot to do it today. And if you want to get through on Let's Talk up on the phones, we would love to hear from you this morning. There's two ways that you can reach us. First is with our local line, which is 858 area code. 457-1090. Again, 858-457-1090. That's our local line. Or you can reach us toll-free. That toll-free number, 877-792-1090. One more time, 877-792-1090. Your chance to talk to this awesome panel from the Eastern Sierra. And not only are you going to get a chance to talk to all these guys and have your questions answered, we've also got a great prize for one lucky caller at the end of the show today. And that is a half-day trip for two aboard the Daily Double out of Point Loma Sport Fishing. You're going to get your chance to go fish with Captain Fred and the boys on what is already a great season. And now with the Rockfish Open, lots of great fishing going on out there on the Point Loma out of uh, 
Point Loma Sport Fishing, or the Daily Devil out of Point Loma Sport Fishing. And if you're in our live studio audience or you're traveling down here to the Hyatt Regency in Long Beach, awesome opportunity. If you want to ask a question to this great panel, you just see Dave, see Gary here. Let them know that you'd like to ask a question. Talk to the cowboy in the back. Let them know that you want to ask a question here on Let's Talk Hookup. We'd love to hear from everybody here. And another really cool prize for everybody that steps up to the microphone today, an opportunity to win a brand new pair of Maui Gym sunglasses. It's the World Cup frame with that great uh, Marlin. It's the World Cup with the Marlin frame. It's kind of a blue and silver frame. Cool. It is without question the single most popular pair of Maui Gyms that we sell with at the, the tackle store. Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. really nice pair of shades. For one lucky caller at the end of the show today, and that's for stepping up to the microphone. going to be a great opportunity And today. Doug is thrown in as a second place prize for a step up to the mic, uh, a night at the Whitney Portal uh, Hostel. Right, Doug? Right, right. Yeah, and we have private rooms, so you could have a, a you know, room for a two, four, six rig people. It would be a good opportunity if you've never even been up there to come up and start to see this year. You know, we're basically Lone Pine is the bottom of the, you know, bottom of the valley, but did you an hour away from Bishop, an hour and a half, basically two hours away from Memphis. So in one day, you can actually ex- experience or explore the whole area. It did come back for us. Week long vacations. Yeah, and, and yeah, I'm sure you have a lot of people doing that. And, and what's the elevation there at the Whitney Portal? Well, the, you know, Whitney Portal, we're 8,300, but the valley floor is about 35, 3,700. And where's the hotel? Uh, it's, it, it's in Lone Pine. It's, oh, it's uh, in yeah, Lone Pine. Right okay. Lone, yeah, it's a three story building as soon as you come into town. Okay, yeah. all right. Very good. Well, one night for. Uh, Another lucky person that steps up to the mic. How cool is that? Well, as you can hear, just an awesome show. Again, if you want to get through on the phones, 858-457-1090 or 877-792-1090. When we come back, we're going to be taking your phone calls, taking these stand-up microphone questions. Lots of great stuff coming up. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. That's right, it's showtime at Dana Landing in Mission Bay. The Fred Hall Show in Long Beach is right around the corner. And the Dana Landing booth this year is actually four-in-one with a combination of four corporate booths within the Dana Landing booth. That means four times the savings for you. The Maui Jim Flying Jimmy with over 300 pair of Maui Jim sunglasses will be there. Come see Mike and try on a pair from this giant Maui Jim display. Lawrence Quigley will be on hand with a huge display of Fishworks clothing. Lawrence will have lots of new styles and plenty of closeouts and great prices. In the Dana Landing booth at the Fred Hall Show, you will also see an extensive assortment of Olu Kai sandals, shoes and sneakers for both men and women, ideal for the Southern California lifestyle. The new guys on the scene are the Salty Crew clothing team. Come check out the latest styles from Salty Crew, one of the most up-and-coming lines in the fishing world. It's all on sale at the Dana Landing booth at the Fred Hall Long Beach Show. Check DanaLanding.com for details. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. Hi, I'm Bart Hall, and I've got great news. The most powerful and critically acclaimed national anglers' rights organization is coming to California. The Coastal Conservation Association works to conserve marine resources and anglers' access to them. CCA Cal is just beginning. If you join us at the Fred Hall Shows, you'll get into the show for free, receive vouchers worth over $150, and be entered into drawings worth thousands of dollars. It's the right thing to do, and it's a great value. Come join us at the Fred Hall Show March 4th through the 8th at the Long Beach Convention Center. Protect California fishing. This is Captain Tim Ekstrom from the long-range vessel Royal Star. With my partners Randy Toussaint and Brian Sims, we have set the bar for the long-range fishing experience. A spring 8-day, summer 5-day, or a fly-down, fly-back, 11-day winter trip, we deliver the highest quality long-range voyage you will find. From our premium RSW fish storage to our top-of-the-line chefs and crew, Royal Star distinguishes itself from all others. Want to grab a spot on the Royal Star? Check us out at royalstarsportfishing.com or call Tracy at 619-224-4764. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Again, we're live here at the Hyatt Regency in Long Beach for the wrap-up, the final day of the Fred Hall Show in Long Beach, and what a show it has been. Indeed, I certainly hope everybody turned their clocks ahead and uh, come on down and join us here. We have uh, plenty of space here to come join, grab a cup of coffee in the hotel lobby here at the Hyatt Regency Hotel, and then come to the show. We're giving away tons and tons of prizes, uh, and uh, you have an opportunity to win stuff and talk to a great panel of Eastern Sierra experts here. So come on down and join the plot. 
fun at the Hyatt Regency. It's uh, right next to the show here, so you can hang out here, have some breakfast, and then uh, head into the show, which opens at 10 o'clock this morning. Right, Bart? Yes, 10 o'clock, which is what Rick will remind you is actually 9. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 10 now. <laughs> yeah, it is 10 now. <laughs> so uh, anyway, come on down. Plenty of time to join us here. And uh, Brian from Ventura is here. Brian, thanks for coming down to the Hyatt Regency and join us, kicking things off here at the Let's Talk Hookup Show. Morning, so, guys. How are you doing? Too, for me, this is fantastic. I had a great day yesterday for information. I want to thank you, and I want to thank Bart for your free pass. I went out yesterday and got to give my wife the pass, and I went out and bought, um, joined CCA, got my other ticket, got my, my booklet. Went through the whole booklet, got all my free stuff yesterday. Nice. Fantastic. It's a fantastic. Save some big book. bucks. I see some big bucks, and I got a great deals. And I want to, you know, anybody coming down to show today, join CCA, get your booklet, take advantage of it. It is a fantastic thing, and I really want to thank you guys for uh, helping me out yesterday. That's right. All right. right well, on. thanks for coming well down. Said. Appreciate that. Well done. And yeah, you have uh, the CCA drive that we've been doing here, launching the uh, the new. Uh, uh, CCA California has been a huge success, right, Bart? It, it has, but, you know, it could even be better if p- people don't believe you that it's such a good deal. N- not only is it the right thing to do, but it's an incredible value like you just heard. You you get into the show, you pay $50, you become a member, you get into the show, and then you, on top of that you get $150 worth of direct vouchers to use, $20 off on rods, and you get lures, and you get hats, and, and then you're entered into drawings where you could rent a Kraken kayak, $1,200 worth of Shimano gear. It's Maui Jim sunglasses. Well, yes. My, and his and hers. So his and her Maui Jim sunglasses. Yeah. So, I mean, the value is incredible. We worked really hard to do this, and a lot of people donate a lot of product. If you don't take advantage of it, it's really silly. <laughs> yeah, indeed it is. Indeed. So come on down if you come to the show. And you get into the show free. Yeah. So there's another 16 bucks. Dave from Santee. Some guy named Dave. Who's that? You know? Dave I have no Santee. idea. No. No. Oh, it's Dave. Oh, it's our Dave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, up, everybody. Say, uh, Whitney, I get your weekly email updates. Well, I guess Adina sends it out during the summer fishing reports, ski reports in the winter. It's just great. Keeps me in touch with you folks real good. And um, last summer, my wife and I, we spent um, the whole month of June into July up in the eastern Sierras. We spent five weeks up there. We, we're RVers, so we were camping out. And if anybody wants to camp out up there and you don't have an RV, Adventures in Camping, I saw you guys everywhere. Thanks, Dave. You did a great job up there. Yeah. And um, we spent it all between McGee Creek and Bridgeport in that area. But my favorite had to have been the um, Coldwater Campground up there at Mammoth. It was just great. I could walk down to, to um, Lake Mary. I float two fish there, Lake George every day, caught fish, hiked up to the high lakes, got my first golden trout. And the nice thing about it is when we needed to do some shopping or wanted a pizza, the town of Mammoth is 10 minutes away. So, Dave, but, you're hired. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah, my question on the uh, RV camping is I know your opening dates are going to vary due to the snowpack up there. When does the Forest Service come out and make their announcement as far as opening days up there for different campgrounds just for my own planning purposes? You know, if you go to recreation.gov, they do have them listed, their anticipated opening dates. And then we also do a campground update on our website at visitmammoth.com. You can always call the California Welcome Center in Mammoth Lakes as well. Okay. And we'll have that updated information for you. But, yeah, it's a great idea to, you know, keep tabs on it because we do get late spring storms that can change those dates. Did you have anything to add? Yeah, you know, the uh, most of campgrounds will be open. Uh, I know they'll open the lakes basin. A lot of times they're uh, closed due to the snow, which we won't have, unfortunately, that big of a problem this year. But uh, if you don't get the information you're looking for from uh, the websites we need listed, uh, call our office or go online to venturingcamping.com. And, uh, you know, the girls in the office will help you out. They're pretty good about knowing when all the stuff opens. Okay, real good. So I can plan out that early season trip up there. Absolutely. Okay, we'll look forward to it. There's always an option. Yeah. And that's the big thing. There's always always an option to camp. Yeah, with over 88 campgrounds now, I think, up in the area. Wow. Uh, Yeah, about 2,200 campsites. So we can definitely direct you in the right direction. You know, the last couple of years we've had really low snow levels, and, and uh, you know the campgrounds that used to open up in May are opening up in like mid mid April. The campground down at Whitney Portal. I talked to the guy last week, and he says he can open up the last week of April. So this is this is sort of the new trend. Uh, 
Awesome. Good idea. Let's, let's, let's talk for a minute while we're on the topic of precipitation and snow. Uh, snow in Mammoth. It's been a little uh, thin this year. However, forecasts are, if you believe in forecasts, are for a pretty wet spring. What do you think, Whit? Sure. I'm hoping it happens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of water. There was, That's a great idea. There was. There's a storm predicted for the, toward the end of this week that they say they might get. You might get seven feet of snow. Is that? Yeah, six to eight feet. And we just six received six, over no, two no. feet. Of snow. Six to eight feet. Six to eight feet. Yeah. So in one storm. In one storm. That's man. That's, what, right? That's yeah. what happens. I've been up there when there was 11 feet in one storm, and it's uh, yeah, it it's happens a lot. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> it's not a rarity. Yeah. For sure. So that could really help. The whole situation, not only from the ski front, uh, for those of us who love the ski and snowboard, but uh, from the water front, too, as far as fish go, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the water levels are, are pretty good in the Mammoth Lakes Basin. They look great. Yeah. Tim, you have a lot of experience with uh, water levels over the years of uh, stocking many Alpers trout. Yes. What's your feeling on this year? What do you think? <laughs> Uh, well, I will tell you that uh, we will start out, as usual, all the bodies of water, creeks and lakes, will be in fine shape. Uh, if this drought uh, continues on, I would say that probably starting in uh, late July and August, you will see the man-made bodies of water will start dropping down. And some of the creeks, you know, will start dropping down. But the natural lakes, and we have so many of them throughout the front country and the back country, they're going to hold pretty much hold their level all the way through because they have uh, they're fed by water sources uh, under the ground that that man knows does not know where that water comes from. The the eastern Sierra is so fractured. Uh, water comes from all over the Sierras to feed all these lakes. And they're they're pretty much drought proof. The vast majority of those lakes. And uh, so between the Department of Fish and Game, Town of Mammoth and Mono County, we're making sure that there's plenty of fish in those uh bodies of water, and uh, I spoke yesterday to the uh, Cal Fish and Game folks about possibly holding some of their four-to-the-pound fish over for September and October, feeding them and getting them up to half a pound so, so we have a very excellent season after uh, uh, Labor Day in the Eastern Sierra, and that's a, that's a beautiful time to come. That so. is a great time to come. Um, and, and evident for that is the amazing thing about um, where the Owens River starts. And if you've ever been right near where Tim's old place is to watch the Owens River begin, you'll realize there's water coming from places you have no idea where it's coming from. Here's this giant uh, flow of water coming out of the ground, basically. Right? Well, it really, Big Springs, at Big Springs Campground, which is one of the campgrounds that Ryan has mentioned where he spots the trailers, it's one of the most phenomenal spring fields anywhere in the western United States. On a normal year, you have 37 cubic feet per second pouring out in a 150-foot stretch out of fractured, a fracture ring of basalt rock that was formed millions of years ago. And for an upper desert area like we are in the eastern Sierra, right on the borderline between Great Basin Desert and an alpine environment, to have that amount of water coming out in one spot, and even after four years of drought, it still puts out between 20 and 25 cubic feet per second. Per second. When, when, when everyone, everywhere else is dry, that incredible spring feeds the Owens River year after year of drought. Uh, it's really amazing. And the fathers of the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power 120 years ago recognized that also. So that comes down and provides 15% of all the water for the Los Angeles Basin. That's a lot of water. And if you've never seen Big Springs and if you've ever seen that phenomena, it's worth the drive down. It's, it's just right outside of Mammoth Lakes and uh, drive into the Big Springs campground and you can't miss it, right? <laughs> that, that is correct. It is, a, it is really a wonder of the Eastern Sierra, among many. Yeah, indeed. Well, let's head down south. John Ireland is here from Rancho Leonero, and he has a fresh report from Baja's East Cape. And uh, John's been working hard all week here at the Fred Hall Show. Good morning, John. Good morning, Pete. All of it's team guest, Rick, Bart. Yeah. Well, we, uh, this is uh, Rancho Leonero's 33rd year. Wow, wow the hall cool. shows, yeah. Thirty-third year at the hall Yeah, we shows. really appreciate it. Thank you, Bart. Uh, it's kind of a benchmark for us because the hotel uh, is closed over January and February. <clears throat> Pardon me, and opens up uh, March first. So it's uh, 
it's kind of a benchmark. This is where we, we get to work right now. So I really look forward to this show every year. And it's big for the, for the hotel. We sell a lot of trips here. And uh, over the years, I'm <clears throat> pretty sure I wouldn't be around if it wasn't for these shows. So, uh, thank you. Um, the year started early at the ranch. Water is already uh, 75 degrees, so wow. it's, uh, it's definitely an El Nino year, irregardless of what everybody's saying, and actually two years in a row. It's uh, a good three degrees warmer than last year, which is a real warm year, so it should be interesting to see what happens. And, and consequently, the year started off with a bang. Very, very good fishing right now. Uh, Dorado in particular, we've got uh, everybody's limiting on Dorado. We've been sending out four or five boats a day. The fish are real close in. I'd say the average fish is 15, 20 pounds. Some nice fish. Lots of striped marlin around. Rooster fish are already going early. Uh, good, good, good inshore bites. So it's, uh, the fishing's really happening in early. So we're expecting a good, strong spring and into the summer. And the airfares right now are amazing. Yeah, yeah, they certainly are. They're as cheap as they've ever been. Yeah. Even, at least out of San Diego, and I know out of Los Angeles, that would hold. Uh, Three hundred dollar airfares on yeah. Alaska non stop round are, trip are common, yeah, including the tax. Them. So you have exactly. to understand too, when you're buying a ticket for three hundred dollars, about a hundred and twenty five dollars of that is tax. It's crazy. Yeah, it's because crazy Mexico has a quite a high tax. So for sure, uh, so that is a very very good fare, and and I think through the season, you three hundred dollars would be no problem getting that. That's round cool. Trip. Yeah, so. and you have space available. I think there's you sure a do. Couple, be... Even a couple of rooms on our tournament in June, early three. June. Three, three, left. three, three rooms left. left. Yeah. And the, the difference this year I might mention is, uh, uh, in the past we booked 20, 25 rooms for the tournament. Uh, this year we booked the whole hotel. Thirty-five. So we're not behind. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We're way ahead. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And of course, honoring our friend Lou Duchesne there too, uh, with a memorial for him. Uh, and uh, he certainly will be there with uh, in in his spirit. There, we're going to spread Lou's ashes. We are. Yeah, we're put the whole group on uh, the big lunacy and go out and have a little party for Lou. Little, yeah, little good old Irish wake. There you go. There you well, go. if somebody wants to book a trip, come on down, join the fun uh, anytime from now through November. Right, November, end of November. How do we get a hold of you? Thanks, Pedro. It's a ranchlandero dot com or one eight hundred six four six two two five two. All right. Very good. Thanks Thank for you. coming, John, Thanks, and uh, we'll Thanks, see you John. at the show. You sure Rachel will. Rancho Leonero booth right behind the Let's Talk Hookup booth. You can't miss it for soon, sure. Soon, soon to be Grandpa John. Grandpa, right. yeah. <laughs> His daughter Jeannie has been, uh, been in the uh, booth and uh, working hard. Even uh, She's like eight months pregnant, so ready to go. Let's go ahead and jump into the phones. You right? got it. Well, the phones are packed up. Let's start it off this morning with Dan, who's calling us from San Diego this morning. Dan, good morning. Thanks for getting started here with the phones on Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning. Thank you so much for taking my call. Hi, Dan. Yes. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for taking my call. Great. Do you, well, you have a question, Dan? Yes, I do. I was heading, thinking about heading up to the Sierras, and right now I'm, I'm just comfortable with spinning gear, uh, light spinning gear. What would be a, a good setup to take up there, and, and where would I go, and what would I be fishing for? Who's going to cover that one? <laughs> oh, okay, well, that's, uh, that's the ultimate question. Everybody wants to know what to use, where to go. Uh, but I would say if you're going to go up in the Mammoth Lakes Basin on those lakes, what I've seen over the years is the Thomas Buoyant lure, the blue-green, uh, has been the hottest one all the way along. Uh, a lot of your other lakes, I know out in the June Lake Loop, regular night crawlers, uh, you know, have been very good for the bigger fish. Uh, and of course, uh, the um, uh, Bridgeport Reservoir, uh, excuse me, the um, uh, Lower Twin Lakes uh, in Bridgeport are, has put out some fantastic browns. Last fall, there were several super trophy browns taken out there. And uh, Jeff, I'm not sure. Do you know what uh, what those uh, browns were taken on? Most of them were taken on a uh, probably about a 10-inch Rapala. They were trolling right there. The shore is the south end of, of Lower Twin Lakes and Bridgeport. So that's that's what they were biting off of there. One, one of the things I've, I've, I've uh, heard is that light tackle is one of the keys for catching trout up in this year, right? Well, that's true, especially later on the season when, when they're what little runoff we have and the water is not turbid. Uh, they really will see that, that, that leader. So... Especially, I would say after the Fourth of July on, the, the waters of the Eastern Sierra become crystal clear, and you got to go. You got to go with the light, uh, the light tackle. Two pound test, Doug says, right, Doug? Yeah, two pound test. It did uh, small hooks, incredibly small hooks. 
Uh, you know, cast masters you know, work all the time. It, 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 they're smaller ones, and then I, I really like it's called a green frog super duper. Uh, that that one seems to work a lot. And then some some trout don't really seem to you know fish for trout, but we use a, uh, a black holy bug, and uh, that seems to work. Yeah. But I had a trip last year where I discovered a new lure, and we used it at Lake Mary and at Convict, and we knocked them dead with that silly Tasmanian devil. The Tasmanian devil. I'm telling you. All right. It was unbelievable. Okay. Well, very good. Hope that answered your question. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. All right. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Cookout coming your way. More of your phone calls. We're going to check in with the catch report, find out what's biting up and down the beach. Lots of great stuff coming up. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Cookout live from the Fred Hall Show in Long Beach. And you're listening to us right here on the Mighty 1090. Want to catch the yellowfin tuna of a lifetime but don't have weeks at a time to commit trying? Then check out Journeyman Sport Fishing in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Based in Nuevo Vallarta, Journeyman offers an angling dream come true. Outstanding world-class fishery, immaculately maintained and outfitted boat, ultra-limited competition at the rail, and a Journeyman crew that has the experience and passion to make your angling dreams reality. A two-and-one-half-day trip offers two full days of fishing from sunup to sundown and only requires four days away from your other commitments. In the 2013 season, Journeyman landed dozens of yellowfin, over 200 pounds, and several over 300. Choose the trip that fits your schedule. Two and one half, three and one half, up to eight days of the ultimate fishing for giant yellowfin tuna. For complete details, check the web at journeymansportfishing.com or contact 619-571-1979. Journeyman Sport Fishing, where angling dreams become reality. Time to talk about great product from Shimano, and I'll tell you what, the big introduction at this show of the Shimano Torium. What a hit, huh? Oh, man, unbelievable reel. They did such a good job with that new Torium, and you're right, it has been an overwhelming success. The reel has been redesigned, very Trinidad-like, you know, it's got that rounded gearbox, it's pushed a little farther forward, left side plate in the frame, all out of the same piece of aluminum. And then it's just very slick. It's got the same EI treatment that Trinidad Metallica has for crazy corrosion resistance. And most importantly, it's an inexpensive reel that operates very, very good. Crazy smooth gearing, really nice drags. They, it's a home run. Sold out in, what, a minute? We sold out of Trinidad, uh, the first round of Torium 20s at Fisherman's Landing Log, which was a lot of reels, sold out in the first 15 minutes of the first day. Wow. But we've been resupplied multiple resupplied, times since. so they're available. There's so reels come on around. down to the show or check out your local tackle store, the new Shimano Torium from Shimano. Many years ago, Baja pioneer Bob Van Warmer found the area he called the Great Fish Trap in the East Cape of Southern Baja and built what is now regarded as the premier East Cape resorts of Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Today, following in their father's footsteps, Bob's sons, Bobby, Chucky, and Eddie, have taken Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol to new levels with the largest sport fishing fleet in Mexico, a luxurious spa, and top-of-the-line resort amenities. Van Warmer resorts have become a destination destination for travelers worldwide. But for us, Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol are just a short two-hour flight away. No other tropical fishing destination offers the experience and value that you'll find at Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Now you can plan your Baja fishing vacation quick and easy by visiting VanWarmerResorts.com. And when you're ready to book, it's quick and easy. Or simply call 877-777-TUNA for more information. Van Warmer Resorts, the East Cape's finest. If you're into the water, I mean getting out and going fishing, diving, surfing, shark diving, or kayaking, you need to check out the Islander at islander-charters.com. The Islander is San Diego's leader when it comes to two- to five-day fishing. In addition, the Islander offers kayak mothership trips, spear fishing trips, and more. Watch the website for trips and adventures available. You won't find a more knowledgeable or well-rounded team than Captain Shane Slaughter, John Conniff, and crew. Experience the Islander difference. Visit islander-charters.com for all the details. XFRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. You're listening to the home of the Padres. Padres are playing some kind of baseball. San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Welcome! 
Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090, live here at the Hyatt Regency in Long Beach for a great spot, great show going on, and man, we are having some fun today. What a cool spot to be doing. It, it certainly is a great spot, and uh, going on all day today, uh, from 10 o'clock this morning till 7 o'clock tonight, all the fun, all the good times, and lots of uh, great values oh, here. So too. many deals this year. I mean, this I can't good. believe the stuff that you were telling me, uh, even just in all the booths, and then Fisher, Fisherman's Line Tackle booths, it's like... 20% off CalStar rods? When does CalStar ever go on sale? That's the beauty of this show is you get deals on things that, frankly, just don't need to be put yeah. on, you know, on special. Like CalStar is going to sell on its own all the time anyways. And yeah. then to see crazy good deals on things like that, it's just, it's so good. And it's across the board like that. There's yeah. so much. Not only are there great discounts by most all of the shops themselves, but then the manufacturers add to that, either adding to the discounts or freebies. How about the Seaguar fluorocarbon? You know, almost every vendor in there is... Uh, selling their fluorocarbon for way less than you normally buy it in the store, and you buy two of them, you get one free from the cigar booth. There's, there's Whoa, some serious that's deals all, going on right at now. At all levels, whether it's a 150 pound test or whether it's 20 pounds. You got pound it, man. Whatever you need. It's pretty yeah. darn cool. You stock Nailed. up on cigar. How about the Gamakatsu hooks? Buy two, get one free. Buy two, get one free. It's just been a crazy show, yeah. and uh, everybody's been super busy, and, and rightfully so, because this is the time, best time of the year to get your deals on tackle. No question about it. Yeah, there you go. Well, find time to find out where to use it. That's with our catch report today. You got it, man. It's time for the catch report, which is sponsored by probably one of the busiest booths in the show, and that's Fisherman's Processing in San Diego, where you get the finest fish processing while you wait from your local, your long range, or your private boat trip. They've taken the San Diego processing business to all new levels. See Sean and Rosie today at Fred Hall Show, and you can friend them on Facebook, and I know that they put a very cool photo on their Facebook page of a crazy crowd standing by all looking forward to getting one of those samples of that great smoked fish or fish jerky that they have there at Fisherman's Processing. You can also check out Fisherman'sProcessing.com for more details. And We're going to start off our catch port off at Dana Wharf Sport Fishing. Talk to the man, Captain Brian Woolley's on the line. What's up, Brian? Hey, good morning, guys. How are you? Doing great. Good, good. You guys are almost at the finish line there from a busy week, it sounds like. We are. <laughs> good deal. Hey, uh, we're coming off a pretty good week of uh, fishing. You know, we didn't have any any big game in our accounts this week, but uh, we've been targeting the rockfish, and it's been pretty dang good for us. Got to say that the weather really, really played into it. Man, it was beautiful weather this week, and it really made for some good, easy drifts. Um, good mix back of the rockfish, and certainly you could finish your day with a, with a limit. Um, a few days, we did end with possession limits for uh, for all of our anglers on board the boat, and then uh, went inside and finished the day off uh, in the kelp there. Again, the weather really helped us uh, with the bass fish on the inside. The water was nice, and the bass fish was pretty dang good, too. So half-day stuff, uh, still doing the same thing along the kelp heads. They're also making a few drops, catching a few rockfish, and uh, getting some sheephead and stuff like that in their account. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of pretty much it for, for our fishing this week today. Uh, down in the harbor, the second day of the uh, Dana, War, or, excuse me, the Dana Point Whale Festival. If you're looking to get a family out on the boat, we have whale watching trips every hour that's uh, – this weekend as well as next weekend. There's tons of events going on in the harbor, some cool little uh, kid fishing clinics and stuff like that as well. So if uh, you guys are looking for a little bit of something to do with the family after being at the show, you can zip on down to Dana Point. There's all kinds of stuff going on there in the harbor. So kids fish free on the afternoon half days as well with the paid adult. I think they got some spots open on that as well today. So uh, if you guys are looking to get on on the boat, give us a call at the landing. The phone number there is 949 496 Five seven nine four. You can link us right through the Let's Talk Cookup webpage there on the banner ad, and I save a few bucks on a local trip. But if you want to make some reservations for a trip during the week, another nice summertime day at Dana Point uh, and Dana Point yeah. at Dana Wharf Sport Fishing today, Willie. It's been nice. Definitely shorts and sandals in March can't beat it. <laughs> we like it. Well, great report. Appreciate that, and we'll look forward to hearing another one right here next week. All right, guys. Enjoy the rest of your time up there, and uh, thanks a lot. And we'll talk to you later. Thanks, Willie. Appreciate the report. Again, hey, that's going to wrap up our catch report. Still waiting to hear from our surf guru, Gundy Gunderson, but I'm sure we'll check in with Gundy a little later on in the show. But, again, it's sponsored in part by Terrafin Sea Surface Temperature Charts. Terrafin Charts give you the latest in water conditions, and they help you catch fish, and more importantly, they help you save fuel because you're going to be driving right to where the fish are at. Terrafin Charts are helpful all year round to find the best water conditions. You can check out the new and improved Terrafin Mobile for your Apple or Android device. It takes Terrafin everywhere you go, all for the same low price. For more information, go to terrafin.com, or better yet, just do what I did and go stop by the booth at uh, Fred Hall Show. You can see Jeff and the whole gang there, and they're going to give you a special show special price. Special show price on Terrafin. You it's got a it. heck of a deal, for sure. 
Blair, Fresno, Fresno Blair is here. Come on, Blair, you step up to the mic there. And, again, you want to join us down at the Hyatt Regency, uh, come on down, plenty of room here this morning. And we're giving away a pair of Maui Jim sunglasses to one lucky step up to the mic person. In addition to a night uh, for, for second place, we're going to give away a night at Whitney Portal uh, Hotel. So that's kind of cool in Lone Pine. What's up, Blair? Good morning. Bart, thank you again for couple more days of spending my money <laughs> and uh, I, I did something yesterday that I didn't think I would ever do I took a fly casting lesson nice very cool so that's my question and did it work and, you know it was it was pretty tough because I didn't know what to do with that left hand <laughs> um, anyway so if we come up to uh, eastern Sierras as beginning fly casters fishermen um, it's like anything else when you start out something new you feel a little uncomfortable so, um, what can we expect, or where do we go um, to, to have a pleasurable trip, not having to walk up to the top of Mount Whitney, because I don't think my legs will do that anymore? I'd recommend starting out. I go out to the Owens River quite a bit, and what make, what's the big advantage for beginners? And I've been fly fishing for years now, and still love it, is that there isn't anything behind you that you're catching your line in. So you, and you can just walk right up that. I would do Owens River and Hot Creek. Hot Creek will provide a little bit more... Uh, yeah, and to add to that, going north also, um, we actually have four places that are open for year-round fishing. You can actually go up there this weekend and start casting um, the Owens River, of course, Hot Creek, the West Walker River, and the East Walker River up north, Bridgeport, Walker, and Colville. And what I recommend if you're just getting into the industry, especially in fly, fly fishing, look up some guides and, take, and have them take you out there. You're guaranteed to have a great time, catch some big fish, and you'll learn everything you need to know about catching fish up there. Very good suggestion. The other thing, too, is a float tube, Blair, is a great way to go out on the lakes and fly cast and uh, uh, catch a lot of fish. You can, you can use various methods. Uh, on a float tube, and like Whitney says, nothing to get snag your lure on but your head. So <laughs> it, it's a good way to go. But uh, definitely the the guide idea is a really good way to to be introduced to that for sure. All right. Well, let's jump into the phones and talk to Chris, who's calling us from San Clemente this morning. Chris, good morning. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning. Hi, Chris. Hi, guys. I'm in Claremont, actually. But uh, I have a question. Every year for the last 35 years, I've been going to the Fred Hall Show in San Diego, and I enjoy it immensely. But I was talking to my friend last night, and I decided to call you guys up today just to find out what is the big difference between the Long Beach Show and the Del Mar Show, because we have time to ta today to go, and would it be our, worth our while on, and to go up there and check it out? Hi, this is Bart. Um, Hi, Bart. How you doing? <laughs> you know, the thing is, every show has its personality. I love the Del Mar show because I get the opportunity to visit with people that I don't get a chance to visit with here because they're so busy. The Long Beach show is the largest consumer fishing show in the world. I'm not talking about here in this city or this state or this country, but the world. And... So you, you can't compare it to anything else, and you, you really need to see this at some time in your life. It's, totally. it's amazing. There's nothing else like it. The energy, the, the factory displays. What you don't see in, in Del Mar is the factory displays so much. You see manufacturers' representatives representing their factories. You see some, but not the level that you see here. Uh, you know, we'll have 400 seminars up here. We have 200 in Del Mar. We have about twice as many booths here as we have in Del Mar. Now, we have as many boats in Del Mar. Uh, Del Mar is a very good boat show. And, uh, and we have all the same family activities that we have up there. But, but just the scope, the volume of Long Beach is amazing. But they're really two different things. I, um, for me, I, as much as Long Beach is my baby and I really love this thing, by the time I get to Del Mar, I really feel like I can, I can become a fisherman and go talk and look and find and do things that I'm just too overwhelmed to do here. So that's kind of how I feel about it. Yeah, and I'll tell you what. Yes, you should come today. I agree. And you will always come back and go to both shows because they're two very distinctly different 
shows. Yeah, you'll see some of the same things, but you'll see a lot of different things at both shows. So if you love fishing, if you love the sport, you want to see it all, come today for sure. This is the spot. I mean, it's the Super Bowl of it. If, if you know, you're know you passionate about your sport, everything that you can imagine is here. And, and like you say, there are two shows that have their own personalities, but I mean, this is everything under one roof. You know, if you're wanting to look at a reel, you don't just talk to a guy in a tackle store. You can talk to the manufacturer of it, and right. you can compare notes on everyone out there. And if you're thinking about traveling to a cool destination, I mean, just look at the panel that's here. Every person represented here has their own booth, and you can just gain so much knowledge at a show like this. You, you owe it to yourself to come check it out. No question. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Don in Woodland Hills is here at the Hyatt Regency. Don? Step up to that microphone, and now you're in the right. Don, you got a day, a day two coming today. Day three. All right, day three. even better. <laughs> it, have you seen everything yet? No. No, no way, right? No way. And I won't see everything by the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you very much. It's great to see all uh, my friends. I feel you're my friends from the Eastern Sierra. Uh, this is my third year to get to visit with you personally. Uh, my question is, um, even though I think I have a lot of experience in the Eastern Sierra, I'd like to know what your favorite day trip is for fishing. Good question. Day trip. Sure. I, I think I'll start um, my favorite day trip, a uh, fishing destination, I guess, growing up in Bridgeport, is uh, is up there at Kerman Lake, just off of 108 Sonora Pass. It's a uh, lesser known destination. You got to get out of your car and walk about a mile on this dirt road. Uh, but you get up there in the fall time especially, and there's just some monster brook trout up there. You bring a float tube and a fly rod, uh, spend a day casting, and then maybe uh, spend the second half of the day hiking up there in the Sonora. Um, you just can't beat it. That's, that, that's what I would pick, at least. Wow. That's, that's a great answer. One. Yeah. Mm, boy, that, uh, that's a big ditto on that answer. But I'll tell you, my, this is Tim Alpers. Uh, Growing up on the Headwaters of the Owens River, uh, my favorite day, and I did many of them uh, as, a, as a young lad and as a young adult and through my whole life, is uh, driving down to the Green Church right by the airport, turning left and going down the Benton Crossing Road to Benton Crossing. It's about five miles in from 395, making a quick left turn right past the bridge, driving all the way upstream to the private uh, fence line, getting out and walking and uh, up to the fence line, and then fishing the meander after meander after meander. There's no, there's no problems with back cast. Those big meanders, pools have, are full of big browns and rainbows. And then I like to finish the day off by going up to Big Springs, where Pete, we talked about earlier, and hiking downstream about, oh, about a quarter of a mile, and you get into a beautiful flat alpine meadow. So I get the whole, th- the whole thing a day. I get the alpine experience with that fresh spring water, which is really a challenge. And then down on the Owens River above Crowley, where I get the big deep meanders and can pull streamers through there. So that's that's usually my day right there. That sounds awesome. Pretty, and and, and the amazing thing about what you're talking about there, Tim, is, is the size of the fish in the Owens River. I, I mean, these are giants, right? Well, if you go to the uh, county website, uh, there's many pictures that Jeff has posted uh, that he gets through the guides, and I get some of them on the uh, uh, Mammoth Tourism site, too. Uh, these huge rainbows, cutthroat and brown, taken on the uh, Owens River, and it's year-round fishing there now from uh, Crowley Lake up to the headwaters. And, uh, you know, with these light winters we've had, you know, you can go out in January, and these big spawners uh, and, and resident trout in Crowley are coming on up into the tributaries, uh, and it's awesome. Some of the uh, pictures displayed on the various sites, uh, uh, the, the Town of Mammoth site and the county site, have, have just been phenomenal. So it's a very well-kept secret. Indeed. And how far is the Owens River from the city of Mammoth Lake? Uh, it's about, about you, go, you leave town, it's about five miles to the south. And right at the end of the airport, you've got that left turn at the Green Church. So it's, it's pretty easy to find it. 30 minutes, right? Totally. No, no, not no, even. No, about, yeah. about 15. Yeah, 15 minutes to get to that world-class yeah. fish. 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah. Is that right, Whitney? Yeah, yeah. that's correct. And one thing I'd like to add, you know, we have a lot of water where you can drive right up to it. So it's very accessible to a lot of people. Uh, but what's really special about that area is if you're looking to have that solitude and really have that moment and get that full experience of the Eastern Sierra and being able to fish and just getting in that rhythm, if you hike more than a mile, people typically don't go that far. 
And so just in the Mammoth Lakes Basin, we have an additional six lakes within a half a mile to a mile. And beyond that, it, it's yours. So my favorite places are, you know, just a little bit further, that five-mile hike, and you'll just have the place to yourself, either there or Rock Creek. I love to fish out of Rock Creek. And hungry fish. <laughs> yeah, All one. right. Hey, thanks Great a lot for coming Doc. to awesome. Hyatt Regency. Thanks for coming down. Really good question. That was man. cool. Hey, when we come back, we got another full hour of great stuff coming your way. More catch reports, more phone calls, and more great information from the Eastern Sierra. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hook Up live from the Long Beach Show on the Mighty 1090. This is Greg Stotesbury from AFCO. For over 20 years, AFCO has been known for its traditional fishing shorts. We now will also be known for our new line of next generation fishing and board shorts. Our new M82 tactical fishing shorts feature quick dry high tech two way stretch fabric zipper fly six functional pockets plus pliers pocket sublimated camo print and our DWR finish so your shorts don't get stained also new to the Alfco line are the M25 Stingray board shorts the Stingray board shorts feature new quick dry four way mind stretch fabric modern zipper fly two technical high cargo pockets with inverted zippers silicone printed dry Draw cords along with our DWR finish to repel stains. Both shorts are new to the AFCO line and come in a variety of colors and sizes. These technically advanced fishing and board shorts continue AFCO's long tradition of providing the world's finest fishing and board shorts. Check them out today at Better Shops Everywhere. It's Fred Hall Show time. Hi, this is Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle, the saltwater tackle professionals. Be sure to stop by the Fisherman's Landing Tackle booth. You'll find the most complete selection of saltwater tackle at the show, including accurate reels. Don't miss your chance to see the redesigned accurate Fury, Boss, and Dauntless reels, as well as the ever-popular ATDs. The Fisherman's Landing Tackle staff has used accurate reels and knows your needs. Come by our best booth ever, Fisherman's Landing Tackle, a must visit at this year's Fred Hall Show. Stop by the giant Turner's Outdoorsman booth at the Fred Hall Show in Long Beach. Over 10,000 square feet of tremendous savings for the first-time angler to the seasoned veteran. The Turner's Outdoorsman booth will have unbelievable specials so crazy they are only available at the show. Here are just a few. Huge selection of Avet Blems at unbelievable prices. Seaguar Premium and Pink Label. Buy 50 yards, get 25 free. Thousands of Shimano Flat Ball and Colt Sniper Jigs in stock. Listen to this one. Shimano Tech Hooded Jackets were 100 bucks, now only $34.98. The hook selection is enormous at the Turner's Outdoorsman booth. And all on sale. Buy two, get one free on Mustad, Gamakatsu, and Trocar. Their top tackle experts from all Turner's Outdoorsman stores will be there to help. Make their Turner's Outdoorsman booth your first stop to load up for the upcoming fishing season. Turner's Outdoorsman, aisle 100 at the Fred Hall Show in Long Beach, where the deals can't be beat. You are listening to the home of the Aztecs. What's that slam dunk? That's what I'm talking about. San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Information is the key to success, and inside information is even better. When it comes to fishing, inside information is critical, and that's what FishDope.com delivers. FishDope.com really does help you catch more fish and save fuel. FishDope.com is the only SST service with a satellite oceanographic PhD on board, the only fish-finding service with a spotter plane. You get daily catch reports from Point Conception to San Martin Island 365 days a year. FishDope.com boasts the largest code group anywhere, covering sport boats, commercial boats, and private boaters. Fishdope.com has online planning tools, moon phase, tides, hot bite icons, and more. What I'm telling you is, if you don't have Fishdope.com, well, good luck. Membership costs less than 40 gallons of gas for the entire year. That's right, one year. What a bargain. Plus, stay tuned for the special code to save $20 on a Fishdope.com membership. Check it out today. Fishdope.com. Catch more fish, burn less fuel. If you are ready to experience a real Alaska fishing adventure, check out Whaler's Cove Lodge in Angoon, Alaska. The calm waters around Whaler's Cove are 100 miles from any large towns, so you will enjoy a wilderness adventure without any crowds. Whaler's Cove Lodge has some of the best salt and freshwater fishing in Alaska, and there is no need for a bumpy boat ride for hours. You can find productive fishing for salmon, halibut, and rockfish just 10 minutes from the lodge. Whaler's Cove also offers fantastic freshwater fishing in wilderness streams for wild salmon and trout. The Whaler's Cove experience 
will fulfill your wildest Alaska dreams on the calm water of the Inside Passage or on a spectacular stream. It's your choice every day at the Whalers Cove Lodge. After fishing, you will dine on fabulous meals created daily by the Whalers Cove chefs and relax in your comfortable room or cabin. Learn more about this exciting Alaska destination on their website at whalerscovelodge.com or call 800-423-3123. Whalers Cove Lodge, a real Alaskan fishing adventure. The offshore fishing last year was some of the best we've seen in years. Let's hope our luck keeps up in 2015. It's a brand new year, and what better way to kick off a new year than with a new Ford? Once again, Ford is America's favorite brand. Just take a look at last year's sales figures. It's right there in black and white. It's easy to see why Ford is so popular. Styling is contemporary, the technology is state-of-the-art, and the fuel economy is more impressive than ever. Fusion, Focus, and Escape continue to be San Diego favorites, and the new Mustang has the entire city buzzing. You've got to check it out. Right now, you'll find the biggest savings on F-150 pickups. The last of the 2014 models are going fast. And talk about popular, Ford F-Series has been America's best-selling truck and a favorite among fishermen for almost four decades. In fact, a new F-Series truck is sold every 43 seconds. Imagine catching a fish every 43 seconds. You'd be popular, too. Start the new year in style. Stop by your San Diego County Ford deal They'll be glad to hook you up. 